Hey everyone, welcome to That's Good Denver. I'm your host, Chris Romeo. And today, I'll be breaking down the entire NBA season. Um, first, uh, I'll be doing the same thing like what I did for the NFL playoffs, where I broke down the every team's season who didn't make it to the playoffs, and like broke down the postseason. I'll basically be doing the same thing for the NBA season. That just ended last week with the Warriors knocking off the Celtics in six games. Um... But yeah, I'll go to over the teams that didn't make the playoffs and go over the play-in tournament in the playoffs. And yeah, it was a fun NBA season. Not quite as good as the crazy NFL season. And like, you know, this upcoming NFL season is going to be even more crazy. But it was still, you know, a lot of fun basketball to watch. And, you know, even though the Nuggets got bounced in the first round five games of the Warriors, you know, um, you know, we didn't have Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. So, you know, it's kind of expected to be a little bit of a down year for us. But we'll be back next year for sure. Um, but, yeah, let's get into this video and start breaking down the teams that, you know, like didn't make it the playoff. <clears throat> so, first off, we'll start off with the Eastern Conference. Um, starting at the bottom uh, with the Orlando Magic. Um, they finished 22-60, and 60, kind of <clears throat> expected, you know. They're a really young team. Uh, they have Cole Anthony, who's pretty good, and like, um, he's actually really good. I think he's a good young player. Um, and they have like, um, they have R.J. Hampton and some other people. I don't know that many players on the Magic, but you know, it's kind of expected they go twenty-two and sixty. But you know, they still have more rebuilding to do for their future. You know, if they uh, want to, you know, get in the playoffs one of these days. You know, especially with other teams around them getting better. The Pistons at uh, 20, 23 and 59. Um, <clears throat> kind of the same thing, you know, like... Honestly, I think the Pistons are kind of in a worse spot than the Magic. Because the Magic, like, have some talent on the rise, like with Cole Anthony. But on the Pistons, other than Cade Cunningham, I just don't really think... You know, they... I think they have more work to do than the Magic, and, you know, like, you know, it's going to be a long time before, like, the Pistons or the Magic, you know, get anywhere, you know, close to the playoffs. But next, the Indiana Pacers, um, they had a worse year than I kind of expected. Like, I expected them to be close to a play-in team, except they're pretty bad at 25 and 57, um... They might have had some injuries and stuff. I mean, they also had some big trades, you know, like they traded DeMontis Sabonis for Buddy Heal, which I don't think that helped either the Kings or the Pacers. I think that kind of um, hurt both teams in a way. Um, I think, uh, yeah, like they just have some rebuilding to do too. And like, you know, it's going to be a couple years. At least, I think, to where they get back in the playoffs and stuff. Um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I I do believe that the Pacers will be good again soon. I mean, they've they haven't won a championship ever, but like they've always they've had their good years and bad years. And when I've, when the Pacers have had their bad years over the years, they've came right back and got back in the playoffs. So I believe in this Pacers team, and I hope they can get back. <clears throat> Next up, the Washington Wizards. Um, this team surprisingly got off to a really good start this year, actually. If anybody remembers, with Bradley Beal. And, you know, everything was clicking until Bradley Beal got hurt. Uh, some trades happened, and, you know, things kind of just went downhill from there. And, you know, I expect the Wizards to be better next year. Uh, and, like, possibly get in the playoffs, maybe. But, you know... They're just in, it was just in a tough spot losing Bradley Beal for the year, uh, this past year. Next up, the New York Knicks, 37-45. Um, I mean, I expect the Knicks to be a little better, but at the same time, when they made it to the playoffs last year and got bounced in five games to the Hawks, I thought it was a little fluky that they made it to the playoffs. Like, I just, they had a really good regular season, but, like, they're not a playoff team. I mean, Julius Randle's overrated a little bit. Um, and, yeah, the, I'm sorry to Knicks fans, but I just don't think the Knicks are that good. Um, so we'll do the play-in teams in a little bit once we get to the play-in tournament. But now we're going to look at the other lottery teams in the Western Conference. 
first up the Houston Rockets, um, you know, it's not much to say other than, you know, they're just in rebuild ro mode right now, you know, after trading James Harden and Russell Westbrook a couple years ago, you know. Um, I mean, they have some young pieces that can put it together. Christian, well, no, actually, Christian Wood doesn't even play for the Rockets anymore. He got traded to the Mavericks recently. So, yeah, that even puts them deeper into rebuild mode. Um, I think that's, like, their best player. And, yeah, they just have a long way to go. And, yeah, I feel bad for Houston Rocket fans, Houston sports fans in general, because the Texans are, like, in a worse spot, too, just as bad as the Rockets. I mean, they have the Astros for baseball, but yeah, I mean, back to the point, you know, the Rockets are in deep rebuild mode right now. Next up, the Thunder at 24 and 58. Now, this was, you know, it's not a good record for the Thunder, but hear me out on this. I mean, the Thunder have some young players, Shea Gilex Alexander, some other really good young players, and... In a couple years, once Shea G. Alexander develops and, like, gets better, this team's going to be scary good. I mean, they knocked off the Nuggets twice, even though the Nuggets, you know, were... Uh, I talk about them a lot, I guess. But, like, the Thunder have talent on the rise, and a couple years are going to be good. This year, they're a lottery team, but, like, they have some young talent that, you know... I think the Thunder have a bright future. Not very bright, but they have a pretty bright future. And I think they'll be in the playoffs in a couple of years. Meanwhile, you got the Trailblazers at 27.55. And the deal with the Trailblazers, you know, um, I didn't expect them to be this bad. And, you know, their future is in jeopardy right now, I think. Uh, they have Damian Lillard, but, you know, CJ McCollum getting traded and stuff. Um... And I think there's even talk Damian Lillard might leave. Um, there's some rumors that he might go to the Nuggets, but, you know, I don't want to, like, um, put myself on the spot or anything by saying that. Um, you know, the Trailblazers, you know, I think Damian Lillard should leave because he doesn't have any talent around him, go to a better team. And, yeah, they're uh, basically in rebuild ro mode right now for Portland. Sacramento Kings at 30 and 52. Um, so, I mean, this is about what I would expect for the Kings, 30 and 52. Um, but at the beginning of the year, people were saying, like, that the Kings could get, Kings could get in the playoffs and stuff because they were getting a lot better, getting some good draft picks over the past three or four years. And, like, um, they had Deer and Fox. They traded Buddy Heald, like I said, for DeMontis Sabonis, which I think hurt both the Kings and the Pacers. Um... You got Tyrese Halliburton. Wait, no, I think he plays for the Pacers. I I, I don't know. Um, but I mean, the Kings had an okay season, about just expected. I ex they could have gotten the play in, um, but they just you know didn't win enough games towards the end, and you know they just couldn't quite get the job done. But you know, they're a few pieces away from get being a play in team, I think, and maybe getting the playoffs. Next up, we got the L.A. Lakers. Um, yeah, I mean, I expect this team to be a lot better. I expect them to be one of the best teams in the West, possibly. You know, like, they had all the hype around them in the offseason last year by getting Russell Westbrook, Dwight Howard, Andre Drummond, and, like, all that talent around LeBron and AD. But, yeah, it was a bad year for the Lakers. Um, you know... They had some injuries here and there. I mean, AD, Anthony Davis got hurt like he always kind of does. And, I mean, Russell, Wis Russ Russell Westbrook had an okay season. LeBron actually had a great season, but I don't know. I, I just don't understand how the Lakers had such a bad year. And they were, like, not bad at the beginning of the year, but they just, you know, kept going downhill. The season got on, they missed the play-in. And, you know, Stephen A. Smith... uh could probably tell you more of how bad the Lakers were this year. Um, oh, and I think a lot of the reason why the Lakers were bad this year was because of Frank Vogel, their coach, who they fired, which was a good move. But, I mean, they could be good again next year. But, you know, um, yeah, this is just a bad year for them in general. So moving on to the play-in tournament, I guess we'll st stick in the West. 
In the first round of the play-in, uh, the Spurs played the Clippers. Clippers won that game uh, pretty handedly. I can't remember what the final score was, but, yeah, Clippers won. You know, the San Antonio Spurs, you know, they got in the play-in, but, you know, they're kind of, you know, just there. I mean, they got DeJounte Murray and stuff, but, like, you know, um, I mean, hey, the Spurs outplay the Lakers to get in the playing tournament this year, so they should, you know, be happy. They should be more happy than the Lakers this for this season, I guess. But, yeah, they got bounces of the Clippers, you know, who will be scary good next year, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, oh, wait, uh, that's my bad. Uh, I was thinking, this, actually, the Spurs played the Pelicans. That confused me. Disregard what I just said a minute ago. The Spurs played the Pelicans in the playing tournament. The Pelicans won that game. I can't remember what the final score was, but Pelicans won, and the Pelicans surprised me a lot this year. Um, the Spurs, you know, kind of just expected, but the Pelicans surprised me. They started off so bad, and they got CJ McCollum, got Brandon Ingram going. They didn't even have Zion Williamson. They got in the playoffs eventually. What a year it was from the for the Pelicans. But then, actually, so the Pelicans would play the the win loser of the Timberwolves and Clippers. And in the Timberwolves-Clippers game, um, it was a great game. Um, it took place on my 20th birthday. And, um, y you know, Clippers led at halftime. But, you know, uh, going in the fourth quarter, the Clippers were up by eight and Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards got going and, you know, led the comeback for the Timberwolves. That stadium in Minnesota was about to explode because they made it to the playoffs for the first time in 2018, but they got the job done, pulled off the upset, and got them the number seven seed. Clippers and Pelicans, um, y you know, uh, this was a close game throughout. I was really expecting the Clippers to win this game, but the Pelicans completely shocked me like they did all season, got the job done, and knocked off the Clippers. And, you know, the Clippers season came to the end, but watch out. I mean, they didn't have Kawhi Leonard all, or Paul George all season. And, like, you know, they still managed a 42-40 and 40 record. When Next year when those guys get healthy, they're going to be one of the best teams in the West. Trust me. Um... So that would put the Pelicans in the playoffs. But first, before we get in the playoffs, we're going to look at the plan on the Eastern side of things. Um, the first round of the plan was the Hornets and the Hawks. And yeah, Trey Young gave it to them, uh, scored a bunch of points. And LaMelo, you know, he, he had a good game and stuff. But, you know, like Trey Young was too much. And that's why they blew out the Hornets in that game. And. I like where the Hornets are right now, but, you know, like, um, they just need more talent around LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball is a great young player. They just, you know, need more talent. You know, Terry Rozier could get better, and, you know, but I could see this team going up. I think the Hornets have a bright future. Then, uh... So then the Cavs played the Nets, and the winner would get the seventh seed, and the Nets kind of dominated that game, as expected. Um, and, you know, KD had a big game, and, you know, they got them the number seven seed. Hawks played the Cavaliers then, and Trey Young had a huge game again, and, you know, gave it to the Cavaliers. I, expect, I think the Cavaliers all around had a better team and stuff, but Trey Young was too much, but... Again, like with the Cavaliers, they had a really good year, even though they didn't make it to the playoffs. They made it to the play in, and like, they're going to be really good in a few years. They have some young pieces. Evan Mobley's a beast. Uh, Darius Garland's a beast. Kevin Love's not a bad player. Um, they got Jared Allen, who's not a bad player either. So watch out for the Cavaliers. Um, so that would give the Hawks an eight seed, and that takes us to the. To the playoffs. All right, so in round one, we'll start off with the Western Conference. Uh, Suns beat the Pelicans in six games. This was a better series than I thought it would be. Like, I thought the Suns would win in five. But the thing was, Devin Booker got hurt for, like, two games. And, you know, that tied the series at one game apiece. Devin Booker would had an incredible series. And, you know, Pelicans looked like they could definitely win this series at one point. But Chris Paul 
prevailed and, you know, Devin Booker got healthy and, you know, they were able to prevail in six games, which was good because, you know, that wouldn't have been good for the Suns if they lost that series, I don't think, but it's good that they won. And, you know, Pelicans still had a great year, so surprised a lot of people. Now the eight versus one matchup in the Eastern Conference, uh, Hawks and Heat. Um, I expected this to be a little bit of a closer series. Like, Trey Young still did really good, but the Heat just all around played better basketball. And, um, yeah, I was expecting it to go to, like, six, maybe even seven games, but Heat were able to get the job done in five. And, yeah, another big-time performance by Trey Young. The next series, the Mavericks and the Jazz. Um, the J Jazz, I mean... The Jazz were honestly lucky to win a couple, win the first game of the series when Luka Doncic was out, and I think the Jazz would have still won a couple games in the series either way, but Luka Doncic's playoff performance was incredible and stuff, and like, game six was a really good game, came down to the wire. What happened was, the Mavericks were up three games to the two in game six, down to like the last ten seconds, and the Jazz could have hit a game-winning three and I think it was Bogdanovich who was wide open, but he missed a wide open game winning three that would have forced a game seven, but instead the Mavs win in six. And yeah, tough way for the Jazz to go home. But the Jazz should be really good if they can figure things out. You know, I just they just showed some signs of inconsistency this year. But yeah, we'll see. Next up, the 76ers and Raptors. So the 76ers, believe it up, were Believe it or not, we're up three games nothing in this series. Then it got tight, three games to two. Um, surprisingly, they won a game in Philadelphia. And game six, I bet, was scary for the 76ers in Toronto to possibly force a game seven, but they were able to prevail. And Joel Embiid, you know, was able to get the job done. But the Raptors didn't have a bad... They had a good year. I mean, better than I expected. And, you know... uh. We'll see what the future brings for them. Uh, next up, um, we got the Golden State Warriors and your Denver Nuggets. Um, y you know, the Warriors dominated the first ga two games of the series. You know, with Steph and too many weapons, shooting threes. Then the Warriors went up three games, nothing in the game in Denver. But that game was actually pretty close, and um. It was close at halftime. The Warriors, I mean, excuse me, the Nuggets scoffed to a big lead. Um, not a big lead, like a 10-point lead. And it was looking like momentum was in their favor, but then Warriors were able to bounce back and, you know, win it down to the wire. And uh, Draymond Green was able to get a steal on Jokic. Jokic still had a good game with, like, 40 points. But, yeah, Warriors went up three games, nothing. And then in game four um, was crazy. Uh, the Warriors... The Nuggets were up at, like, 18. The Warriors came all the way back, took the lead with, like, a minute left. And then, but Jokic was able to go to work, get a bucket, get a bucket to Monte Morris, and Will Barton was able to hit a corner three to, not, to win the game, 126-121. Then in game five, Warriors were up three games to one. Um, You know, we were up for a good majority of that game by like eight points going to the fourth quarter. Then the Warriors were able to go on a run. Our offense got really cold because they were just, Draymond Green was able to lock up Jokic, which Jokic still had a good game, but he was able to lock up Jokic. And that's where it hurt the Nuggets, not having Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr. And that's why the Warriors were able to to get some buckets and, you know, end the Nuggets season and move, move on in five games. But watch out for the Nuggets. I don't mean to be biased. I don't think I'm being biased. But, like, watch out for the Nuggets next year when we get Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. back. We'll be really good. Um, Next up, the Bucks and the Bulls. Um, Bucks won this in five games I expected. The Bulls got off to a really good start this season, but they kind of just didn't have a good second half of the season. Kind of barely made it the playoffs. Um, But I expect the Bulls to be really good next year. And, you know, they even put up some good fights in some of these games against the Bucks, expect, expect, except for when they played at home, the Bulls. But, you know, Giannis just went on a tear, and, you know, he's just too good. And, yeah, but the Bulls will be really good for some years to come. 
Next up, the Grizzlies and the Timberwolves. Grizzlies won this in six games, probably just like I predicted it. Um, the Timberwolves, you know, they had a really good year. I did not expect them to be this good. They're on the rise and stuff. They're a scary team, and, you know, Carl Anthony Towns is really good. Anthony Evers is really good. And, you know, watch out for them, and, you know, the Grizzlies got the job done. Um, with Ja Morant and stuff, but watch out for the Timberwolves. Um, Boston and Brooklyn, um, Boston wins four games, nothing. Um, I was really surprised the Boston Celtics won in four games. I wouldn't have been surprised the, the Nets won this series. Um, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown were able to figure it out together, and yeah, that's just... It's just disappointing that the Nets lost like that. I mean, part of it's on Ben Simmons and stuff. But, yeah. Um, it's too bad their season ended like that. It was a disappointing year for the Nets. I think they'll be back next year. But, yeah. Boston, you know, they had a really good year, which I'll get into in a minute. On to the second round of the playoffs. The Mavericks take down the Suns in seven games. So... This is a back and forth series, you know, each game was pretty much a blowout, I'm pretty sure. Then in game 7, I expect this to be a close game, I even expected the Suns to win, I predicted it. I don't know what happened to the Suns though in game 7. I mean, Luka Doncic went off, the Suns had no consistency on offense, and I feel bad for all my Suns fans that I know in Arizona and some at Bethel and stuff, but... Yeah, it just sucks for the Suns to end their season like that after being the best team in the league and possibly have a chance to win your first championship. They they could definitely be back the Suns can next year, but you know they have some work to do, especially for a Western Conference as, that is getting better. Round two, uh, Miami takes down uh, Philadelphia in six games. Um, he won the first two games of the series pretty handily. Then the 76ers bounced back and won the next two pretty handily at home. Surprisingly, they'd come back like that. But then the Heat were able to prevail in six games. And, you know, they all around uh, play better team basketball and stuff. And the 76ers. 76ers aren't a bad team. And I actually predict them to win this series, 76ers. But um, the Heat are just, you know, a little bit better. And they probably deserve to win. Next up, Warriors, Grizzlies. Um, so I expected the Warriors to win this series in six games, but I was not expecting the Grizzlies put up a really good fight. You know, John Morant did not play the final three games of this series, and you know the way they put up a fight and stuff. Like they won, they dominated the Warriors and won in Game Five without John Morant. They even played them really close in Golden State without John Morant. And if John Morant was playing in the series, I wouldn't have been surprised the Grizzlies won the series, to be honest. But Warriors have too many weapons, and yeah, watch out for the Grizzlies next year. They're going to be really good. Next up, Bucks and Celtics. Um, the winner of this series, I predicted to go to the NBA Finals. I was eventually right, but I expected the Bucks to win the series in seven. Instead, the Bo Boston Celtics were able to take them down. Game five was crazy. Um, then Boston was able to prevail in game six on the road and then get it done at game seven at home. So congrats to Boston by knocking out the defending champs. Western Conference Finals, Mavericks Warriors. Um, this is where the Cinderella story or not the Cinderella, the amazing run by the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic comes to, to an end. Um, it was a great run, but you know. You know, the Warriors take them down in five games, and it's just tough. Um, same thing with what happened to the Nuggets, you know. But the Mavericks will be really good next year, and, you know, they played a lot better than I expected. Heat and Celtics, Eastern Conference Finals, this is a great series. So, like, the first three or four games of the series were complete blowouts. But Game 5 was really good. Uh, Boston won that game. Game six, um, Heat surprisingly won the game on the road. Jimmy Butler had like 45 points, got it done on the road, forced a game seven, which was resilient by Jimmy Butler. It was all Jimmy Butler, because then in game seven, like, they, 
The Celtics were up by 11. Celtics eventually won the series, but Jimmy Butler got him back in the game with like two minutes left, cut it down to two, and then Jimmy Butler with 30 seconds left had a, a wide open three he could have hit. It was a questionable call, but he shot the three, missed it. If he would have made that shot and they would have won the game, Jimmy Butler, Eastern Conference MVP, but it did not go in. Celtics were able to win the series and win game seven, 196, but hats off to Jimmy Butler and the Heat, and, you know, they'll be really good, and, you know, imagine if he, Jimmy Butler had a little more talent around him, that would be crazy, but the Heat are an underrated team, and, like, I think they're really good for years to come. The NBA Finals, the Golden State Warriors, of course, beat the Celtics in six games. Um, game one, uh, you know, the Warriors were able to bounce back over game one, you know, where they blew it in the fourth quarter. They were up by, like, 10 points and ended up losing by, like, 17. Got beat 40-13 to 13 in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter. Dominated game two, got dominated in game three to go down 2-1. to one. Game four was really close. Steph played incredible, had, like, 42 points to tie the series at two games to two. Warriors dominated game five. Um, to go up three games, two, and then game six. I actually missed a lot of the game six because I was at Young Life camp, but I was able to catch up with the highlights, and, you know, Boston got off to a good start. Then Steph Curry got going. The Warriors went on an eventual 21 to nothing run. Um, were able to go up, like, 13 and a half, and Boston had showed some signs of comebacks in them. They cut it to, like, seven at one point with Jason Tatum, but... Golden State was able to prevail in the fourth quarter with Steph Curry. Steph Curry got finals MVP, and the Warriors won it all for the first time since 2018. But great year by Boston, you know, uh, with Jalen Brown and stuff. They were only, the Boston Celtics were only like 500 at one point in the season. Then, with their number one defense, got them to the finals. And, you know, it's amazing what they did. They had an amazing year, but it, they fell short to the Golden State Warriors who probably deserved to win the NBA Finals the way they played team basketball and stuff. But what an NBA season. The Nuggets didn't didn't have a bad season, but they they should be better next year once they get healthy. And with Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. And it was a fun NBA season and stuff. And it was, it was nice to see the Warriors win it all over the Celtics. I did not care who won the series, to be honest, because I like the Warriors a little bit more. They've won it more. Recently, and those Celtics haven't won since 2008. But I don't mind seeing the Warriors win it again for the first time since 2018. Was... But that's how I break down the NBA season. I watched a lot of basketball as much as I could. Again. At least I definitely watched the Nuggets a lot. But great NBA season. And, you know, I can't wait for another NBA season once the Nuggets are better. And you get Jamal and Michael Porter Jr. back. But... What an NBA season. Before I hop off, um, you know, um, the Avs, Colorado Avalanche, they're one win away from the Stanley Cup Finals. Winning it all, so go Avs, baby. Up three games to one, and yeah, it was a great NBA season. I'm glad I got to break down this video. But yeah, go Avs, good NBA season, and let me know in your comments down below. Like, subscribe, comment. I'm Chris Romeo, and... That's good, Denver.